Welcome to the Meaning of Catholic podcast, Uniting Catholics Against the Enemies of Holy Church. I'm Dr. Jennifer Bryson, and our guest today is Maciej Świerzynski, the director of a new Polish film about the traditional Latin mass called The Hidden Treasure of the Church. So we're going to open with a prayer. Oremos. In nomine Patris et Filii, et Spiritu Sancti. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum. Benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in hora mortis nostra. Amen. Sancta Maria, Domina Victoria. Sancte Joseph, terror demonum. Sancta Antoni a deserta. Orate pro nobis. Amen. Amen. So since this is my first time hosting a Meaning of Catholic podcast, I'd like to introduce myself just briefly before we get into our topic and also learning about our guest today. I am a member of the Meaning of Catholic Guild. And I am an American Catholic who lives in Austria, where I'm translating the works of the Catholic author Ida Friederike Goeres from German into English. And um, the our topic today is this new film about the traditional Latin mass that was produced in Poland. And the film tells us about the traditional Latin mass, but also something that is a new window for those of us who are outside of Poland, a bit about the traditional Latin mass in Poland. And I'd like to start by sharing a quote with you about the film from the uh, film's website. Quote, the first full length documentary about the grassroots uprising of the faithful in the Catholic Church who said enough. The hero of the film will be the rediscovered, the Holy Grail, of the church, the mass in the classical Roman rite, and a journey through the meanderings of the human soul, traditional spirituality, and dramas that take place in the deepest corners of the human heart. So Mache, um, if you would tell us a little bit about yourself and your role in the film, uh, we'd love to learn. Thank you, Jennifer. Yes, first of all, uh, I'm very, very honored to be here and very glad to see such a beautiful community. I'm a Roman Catholic husband and uh, father of three children. We live in Poland. And uh, yes, as I said before, I'm a uh, director, editor uh, of uh, uh, the full length documentary, uh, The Hidden Treasure of the Church. The, the film was basically made by me and my wife. This is a film of a couple, of a married couple, that uh, tried to find their way in these uh, difficult uh, times. So, and for our viewers, um, there will be an opportunity to watch it together with the Meaning of Catholic Guild, for those who are Guild members. In the show notes, I'll have a link uh, if you'd like to join the Guild. And our online watch party with live chat will be on Saturday, July 22nd at 12.30 p.m. Eastern. So, Mache, how did you discover the traditional Latin Mass? How did I discover the traditional Latin Mass? Uh, it came, the, the first uh, words about traditional Latin Mass came from uh, from the mouth of my wife's sister. Uh, she mentioned it during one of the meetings, family meetings, but then it was uh, just some kind of enigmatic word that meant nothing to me or to my wife. Uh, later on, her brother Jacob asked, it was another meeting, family meeting, maybe it was like a couple of months later. Uh, Jacob, uh, brother of my wife, he said, he asked, my wife, would you like to see traditional Latin mass? Uh, my wife said, yeah, why not? Okay. She took me as well with, with her. Uh, it was the time when we had our twins uh, that were one year old. Mm -hmm. So when we entered a, a very small 
and the cold chapel. And it, it was very, let's say, uh, in a way significant because there was a small cold chapel and just uh, five meters away from a big Novus Ordo, warm, beautiful church. So when we entered this chapel, looking at the big Novus Ordo church on the left, we were a uh, kind of uh, feeling a little bit strange. What's going on? Why do we enter such a small chapel? Is it a some kind of sect or or what is it? So once we entered, uh, yeah, the priest was standing back to us. And my wife, she went with her brother to the first row, listening to the mass. Uh, I decided to take uh, care of my children, our children. So I said, okay, just you can go and listen. I will keep on running, chasing my one-year-old twins. You know, one is going left, the other is going right. So not only I was occupied with my children, uh, but also I, I didn't understand anything because obviously it was in Latin. So for me, this, the first, uh, time I, I saw Latin mass was nothing but a um, strange feeling of, of, of something that I couldn't really remember or, or you know, any kind of experience. But even though my wife was sitting in the first row, when she went out of the church, out of the church, she said, my God, thanks for vernacular languages. Thank you for vernacular languages. Thank you that we have our own masses in Polish. Thank you. Thank you. I thought to myself, <laughs> she had the same feelings as, as I did. Okay. Uh, it was no long, no longer than maybe six months when we learned that there is mass, mass, mass of the ages um, pretty close to our home. Mm -hmm. uh, this time it was in a big church and somehow and something, let's say, made us go there again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When we went there again, uh, for my wife, it was a big church, you know, huge ceremony. It was a high mass, sang mass. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my wife was struck completely. She, she like, she, she just fell in love immediately. For me, it was a painful experience because my, you know, Flesh body said, um, I want to leave. I still don't understand the ceremony. I don't know what the priest is talking about. What is going on here? So as a man, as a flesh and blood, I thought to myself, I want to leave. I'm frustrated. But, you know, the spiritual level, on the spiritual level, something kept me staying there. It was some kind of schizophrenia. Yeah. yeah. I want to leave. At the same time, I didn't want to leave. I felt like it, home. It, it sounds like a mirror of your one-year-old twins, one going one way, one the other. Exactly, and I'm somewhere in the middle. And, and those feelings, they were really strong, very strong. Leave, stay, leave, stay. So after the mess, which was like one and a half hour, I was completely tired. Mentally, I was completely tired. But when I went outside, I thought to myself, is it Catholic mass? Where was it for all these years? So this was this was it. This was it. I I felt I have to stick to it. So yeah. this was the beginning of the journey. Interesting. So I'd like to share a screen again mm -hmm. and ask you. Um, in the film, you have this graphic, um, and for those who are listening, I'll explain what's on the screen. Um, there's a beautiful drawing in the background of a priest celebrating mass, the elevation, the awe of those who are there. And then there is a graphic with red bars, and it goes from 2008 to 2022 showing the growth of the traditional Latin mass in Poland. And every single year it's going up. There's a small plateau in the middle, but even then it's going up a little. And there's only one time it goes down 
um, which is at the very end. But I think in those years from 2020 to 2022, uh, life everywhere was strange. And so I think also statistics are often will be strange and thrown off. Um, so it's definitely growing and becoming more and more present in Poland. But how do you think that mainstream path Catholic Polish Catholics view the traditional Latin mass today? Let's say the history of Poland is kind of kind of complicated. So mm, let's say thanks to communism, it was one of the good sides of communism that people kept their faith because faith, Catholic faith, was the symbol of opposition, was the symbol to fight, you know, to keep the faith, to keep the uh, to keep nationality, to keep Polish uh, tradition. So we kept the traditional Catholic in our hearts for many years. They want to go to, go to church. They want to see holy water. They want to kneel and take the body of Christ on their tongue. They want to pray a lot. It's very strong. So we miss that. In this case, many people, they are, as you can see on this graph, they are discovering, after discovering the Mass, they feel like home, mm -hmm. they feel like going back home, returning home. So that's why this, this, uh, all those numbers are going high. It was just after uh, Sumorum Pontificum of Benedict XVI, it yeah. exploded because just before it was not so easy to, mm -hmm. for the priest to give a mass and mm -hmm. for the layman to find it. It changed. Of course, later on we had this. Um, motu proprio yeah. of Pope Francis, but this is another story. Anyway, people discovered that there is this Roman Catholic faith that they can really cherish. And they are joining this movement, let's say, of, of traditional Catholics. And there's the other side of, let's say, Novus Ordo Catholics of, in Poland that treat us as a sect, as Lefebvrists, mm -hmm. as uh, schismatics as those who oppose to the current pope, the, um, they treat us as those who oppose to the current teaching of the church, of Catholic church. It is like heartbreaking that there is a big line now drawn between Novus Ordo Catholics, New Catholics, Charismatic Catholics, and traditionalists. What is even worse, when I found the traditional community a traditional Catholic community, I thought there will be that I found my peace. But what I have noticed is that divisions are even stronger inside of tradition. It's one reason that when I discovered the meaning of Catholic Guild, I appreciated it so much because Timothy Flanders has done so much to say, look, we, we have to recognize who the true enemies of the church are. We need to be united. And inside of the guild, there's really an ability to agree to disagree. Um, about issues that are important but not absolutely essential. Exactly. Um, it strikes me that your film offers an opportunity in Poland to help create a bridge between tradition-friendly Catholics and the Novus Ordo community. How did exactly. you come? How did this happen? That you, um, as a relatively you know new attendee in the traditional Latin Mass community, came to make this major full-length film. Let's say for many years I had this feeling that I have to make a movie, even though I'm not uh, educated uh, man. I didn't finish and I didn't graduate any film school, but I had this feeling for at least ten years that I one day there will be this day that I make a important movie. I had no idea that this would be so important and this would be traditional Latin mass. I had no idea. Wow. So it was a day when my wife, she just uh, she's a very creative person. And uh, one day she came up, all of a sudden she said, let's make a movie about Latin Mass. What year was that? It was 2019. Okay. And it was like, bang, bingo. Oh my gosh, this is it. I was, I was just like, it just came through me from top to bottom. It was, yeah, that's it. That, 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 that is what, I'm, what I was waiting for. So... We had nothing, completely nothing. We had no equipment, no money, no supporters. Nobody knew us because we are living in a village, in a village. So only villagers know us and nobody else. We were unknown in the in the society, in the community of traditionalists. So when, when we first came up uh, with this idea of making a movie, 
people were very suspicious about us in the community that we are uh, going to. So, uh, but but we felt we have to do it, and the, if God wants to do it, He will just pave the way and make us finish the movie. So uh, it was a huge risk, huge risk. But you know, nobody knew us. But every time we called someone, even let's say Catholic celebrities from Poland, uh, known priests or journalists, we uh, uh, they would accept to meet us for an interview. So, so it was it was so surprising that everybody agrees, you know, to take us in and and make it, not knowing us. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we were we were just surprised that they are agreeing to see Maciej and Anna, completely unknown people. And when they were asking us, "What are you doing?" We we're making a film about traditional Latin mass. Are you sure you know what you are getting into? And this was it. We didn't know what we are getting into. That's why we agreed, and that's why we wanted to make this film because we had no idea what is in front of us, what is waiting for us. You know? Yeah. What? What was your biggest unexpected hurdle in making the film? When we decided to make this movie, not knowing what will await us and how complicated it will be, we already knew that there are some divisions, strong div divisions inside of traditional communities. And my idea was uh, because they were those communities that were pushing uh, to their side, uh, they were pushing us uh, to make the film in a specific way, to emphasize on this, emphasize on that. I said, no, no, I'm, uh, I'm a Roman Catholic. Uh, I already know I love this mass and I want to show that this mass is the only thing that can unite us all. Yeah. Amen. So I say I will go to everyone, apart from the mm. vacantists. I will go to everyone to speak about why he loved Latin mass. Priest, layman, they agreed, they accepted my idea, all the communities, even though it was, as you can imagine, because you know well how is it, it was not easy. Uh, many times uh, they wanted some of the parties wanted to leave the film, they wanted to reject the film, resign, whatever. They would say, no, if this guy will be on this film, I'm not talking to you guys, just take me out. So there was a lot of negotiations, but above all, there was a lot of praying. I prayed a lot because I was uh, Suddenly, it struck me how important it is, and that this film will, in a way, influence people. Yeah. So I was praying God very much, so it would be only truth. No, oh. Go ahead. Manu no manipulation, mm -hmm. no, no. Um, I mean, lack of ob objectivity or or just my opinion about something or or you know editing in a special way to, nowadays you can do everything with the material that you have for editing you can you can just fit to anybody's um, liking it's it's just you know magic of let's say editing but for me the most important it, it was just to give the truth what people say that's it well having seen the film um, and I encourage our listeners and viewers to watch it. Um, it manages to, it, it is presenting the, the beauty, beauty of the traditional Latin mass, helping to situate the situation of the traditional Latin mass in the church today um, for a, a large, broad audience. Um, and also I'm very inspired that you had this, you know, your wife's came up with this idea four years ago. You persevered through four years. Um, there's many today who are troubled with what's going on in the church and want to do something. And I think that you and your wife can be examples to us of being willing to persevere and take a long-term approach because to do a project well and to do it with excellence, um, 
takes time, prayer, um, support, more prayer, more time, more prayer. Exactly. Um, so uh, one of the questions I have is, you've made the film available now with English subtitles. Mm -hmm. You know, even though the film is Poles speaking in Polish about the mm -hmm. church in Poland. Yeah. Um, but it's also, the film tells a story of the traditional Latin mass that is about the mass itself. So it, I could, I was happy um, to see the film is available for a larger audience. Why did you decide to add subtitles in English? And do you have plans for subtitles in any other languages? Yes, uh, we had uh, we had English subtitles because people asked us mm -hmm. uh, to do it. Besides, we knew that uh, to impact on large audience, uh, we have to do it on English. You know, it's international language, so it, it was it was obvious to make it in English. But of course, now people uh, they are asking us for other languages. Uh, we have already Slovakian, we have Russian, Belarusian. Now waiting for French. Um, the beautiful thing is that people, when they see the movie, they say, oh my gosh, I, I have to have it in my husband's language, my wife's language, because in many cases, Poles that are watching our channel, they, they live abroad, mainly oh. in the United States. There is a huge, we have a huge audience in the United States, in Germany, in the Great Britain, in France. And usually there are like mixed couples, married couples. So, so they ask for languages like French, German, and they say they offering their help. We will translate it. We'll, no problem. Just just let me do it. So it's ongoing. It's French ongoing, German ongoing. Uh, yeah, people from Philippines they are watching now. So yeah, it was just an obvious choice to make it in English. And now the re the, the rest of languages will follow. Well, it's terrific. Well, I, because I live in Austria, right away I wanted to share it with some Austrian and German friends who aren't very comfortable with English. Um, and I also thought of a seminarian I know who does not know English. Um, and I'm very happy that among the multiple languages you mentioned, you mentioned his. Uh, <laughs> so is um, I think it's, yeah, I, I, people who watch this film, it immediately speaks to, oh, I want to share this. So that'll really help with people sharing it. Yeah, of course, it will be much easier if it was dubbed, but it's uh, it's extremely difficult to, to yeah. dub it. And it's, you know, no, I mean, this, the subtitles um, are clear. They worked just fine. And also I had the volume on the whole time uh, because listening to the people in the film tell their stories. And something I really like in the film is that there's human stories and listening to them speak, even though I couldn't understand the language still you know, the intonation, the tones, the exactly. feeling. I captured some of their emotions by listening. Exactly. So. Th th this is why si sometimes I like to watch Chinese movies. Mm. Because I do not understand the word, but I can feel and see their emotions. Yeah. And of course, read the explanations. And it, it's, it's, it is also some kind of experience to watch yeah. a movie like that. One of my favorite parts of the film is when a woman in the film, and I think it's your wife, um, Anna says, our struggle reflects the stories of people lost in chaos. Yeah. Um, because how I returned to the traditional Latin mass, because I'd had a first go at it when I was coming into the church after being influenced to the faith by Polish students while I was abroad. So I came into the church and this was late 90, late 80s, early 90s. Um, but the people seemed like they were all angry and they were, I didn't quite get it. Uh, although I was then very troubled with what I found in the Novus Ordo for years um, and had a lot of difficulties after coming into the church. Then when I came back and re-found the traditional Latin mass again, I was living in Washington DC, which is a city of tremendous um, sexual chaos, mm. social chaos. And I, found an anchor for my soul. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, I understand you completely. What is your favorite part of the film? There are a couple of uh, favorite parts, but um, um, when I was making the movie, when I was making uh, first edits, I knew that I have to start the story or at least include the part about Vatican II, of course. 
And before editing, before making this movie, I knew that there was something like Vatican II, that there were some changes, something bad happened intentionally or unintentionally. But when I went deep into the edit, I felt, I felt, really felt the, the big enthusiasm of part of the clergy making this Vatican, uh, Vatican II, because they saw that something is going wrong in a way, in some ways, with the church. The church should make some kind of decisions. So I felt the huge enthusiasm of those clergy going to this Vatican church. They really thought that this will renew the church, at least some of them, those with good intentions. And for me, it was striking that I really felt that they had good intentions apart from the clergy. They wanted you know, re really renew the church, but staying within the tradition. But then it struck me that the other part was not really interested in renewing the church within the tradition. They want to make their own interests and businesses and their own plans. But it was it was painful to see uh, this big enthousi enthusiasm and the effect the effect of it. If you know what I mean. Yeah. But as as you say in your description of the film on your website then the hero enters the scene. Um, and I love that the description of the traditional Latin mass as a sort of hero helping us to get through this dark valley. Um, so um, this, the, film ha the film has a positive aspect too. Uh, film itself, yes, uh, if you watch it all, uh, because uh, this is how life wrote it. Uh, this, you know, this, 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 Latin mass, Roman Catholic, Catholic mass uh, that was just swept away, hidden somewhere, because this was my feeling that it was hidden mm -hmm. somewhere deep. But, you know, it just raised up again, let's say. And, and now we can really appreciate that God had this plan and is giving us it again. He, he just, you know, I, I many, many often, uh, very often I say many people, they, uh, they, they see, but I mean, they watch, they look, but, but they don't see. And this is what we are now doing. We want to tell as, ma as many people as we can. One more uh, important aspect uh, that I want to mention is when we discovered Latin mass, it was this, this shock, of course, that something like this existed in church. But what followed, what followed was uh, traditional Catholic teachings. And this is actually what made us to make the movie. Because I just, I, I thought, okay, it's only mass. It's only Latin mass, nothing else. But then we started to discover the whole new world. It just felt like Columbus going to America and see, wow. 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 Just, wow. And, and then came the feeling of, I have been lied. I have been lied. Yeah, to be lied to her is, you know, church, the mother, the mother lied to me. I, I had a similar experience. It was also, a, a, it was like opening an entire, I knew the church herself was a treasure chest, but now I had an idea how to open different parts of that treasure yes, chest. Exactly. And for example, um, last year I read um, uh, the um, Catechism of Basil, which I think is from 1947 or 48, and that I'd learned about from a traditional priest, and it was fantastic. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yes, you're right. There's. It's about so much more than the mass, but the mass is that that centerpiece that sort of the holds treasure it. is huge. It's, yeah. it's it's completely huge. But then it was like almost two years that I was processing it inside me. I I I just. You know, it's 12 hours. very often I, I, I was t telling myself, OK, I don't want to get into this. I want to stay in Novus Ordo, not knowing what is going on, because it is too painful. Mm. But, you know, going for the truth was stronger and said, God, help me, give me strength. I want to follow. Yeah. So um, in closing, do you have any um, 
Can you share with us any ways that um, our listeners and viewers can support your work? Me and my wife, we run a YouTube channel, which is called uh, Hard to be Catholic. And through this channel, uh, many people can support us. You can do it through Patreon or PayPal. You can simply leave a comment and definitely and mainly pray for us. Very, very appreciated if people pray for us. We can feel it. And this is wonderful. You know, God is great. So I'll add a link uh, to your YouTube channel in the show notes. And where can people see your film? The film is on the first page of YouTube channel. And uh, for those of our listeners and viewers who um, are now using Spiritus TV, I told Mache today about Spiritus. So uh, he's going to look into that and perhaps the film will be available there too. Mm -hmm. Uh, And a reminder that our Guild Watch Party of uh, the film, The Hidden Treasure of the Church, is going to be on Saturday, July 22nd. We're recording this in the year 2023. And it'll be at 12.30 p.m. Eastern. And it will be um, broadcast via a link on Zoom. And there'll be a live chat during the film. To get the link to join the watch party, um, Timothy Flanders will share it with members of the Meaning of Catholic Guild. If you'd like to join the Guild, there will be a link in the show notes. And um, again, thank you so much, Maciej, for joining us. Thank you very much, Jennifer. For making the film. Um, And we'll just close with um, a prayer. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nun cendin hora mortis nostra amen. Gloria Patri et Filio et Spiritui Sancto. Amen. Amen.